So now that we have our base tarmac uh, created here, we're going to create a tool that will allow us to add cracks to our texture. Uh, and then we can use this tool for any other tarmac textures that you make, or really any other textures that you make that have the same cracking effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by putting in a tile sampler. And let's put the random seed to one and let's duplicate this. And on the first one, we're going to put the number to 15. So pull this out a little bit. Uh, we're going to leave it uh, the pattern at square and let's change the size to 0 0.5 and 0 0.91. A little bit of size random at 0 0.37 and 0 0.73. Let's put the scale to 1.76 and the scale random at 0 0.51. So now let's move down into the position area. So let's do an offset of 0 0.36. And a little bit of position random, 0 0.25. Okay, so let's go down to the bottom here. And I don't want to do any rotation random, and I'll come back to why that is in a minute. But we can go look at the color random, and we'll give it a color random. Put that all the way up. And then we can set this to scale for color parameterization mode. And let's bring this up to 0 0.94. Now let's use this tail sampler and we'll kind of do the basically the same thing. Go back up to the top, put in our numbers. We're going to do a 10 and an 11 and then size 0 0.5 and 0 0.91. Scale to 1.26. Scale size random 0 0.37 and 0 0.83. The scale random 0 0.51. Position random go so 0 0.15 and an offset of 0 0.12. Again, no rotation random. And we're going to go all the way down to the color random. Put this to 1. Change this to scale and put our color parameterization multiplier to 0 0.85. And then what we're going to do is do a distance node and a levels node. Plug these into the distance node like that and then duplicate that and then bring this down and plug it into our other tile sampler. Change this to only source and bring up the maximum distance and then do the same. And then with our levels node, we'll just bring the white values all the way up and with this one as well. And now we have this as our mask and this is our mask. Let's put in an edge detect. And put our edge width to 1.29 edge roundness to 1.07 and let's bring the tolerance up to 0 0.59 let's duplicate this for the bottom distance node and let's do 1.35 Edge roundness of 1.63 and we'll leave the tolerance at 0 0.59. And now we're going to blend these together with poppy blending mode and we'll bring out a histogram scan using our bottom distance node as the mask for our contrast to 1 and our position to 
and then bring that into our opacity. And then we have two different variations or cracks base here. And we're going to put a fluid fill node in. Capture all the data there and do a flood fill to grayscale with the luminance random of one, luminance adjustment of zero. Let's do an auto levels to make sure that we have everything. And then we're going to do a distance node. A levels. Plug that into the top mask input and bring the white values all the way up. And use only source with maximum distance just to make sure we've got it. And then we're going to do an edge detect again, so similar back down to here. An edge width of 1 and a an roundness of 1.83 and a tolerance of 0 0.59. And let's duplicate this. Edge roundness of one, sorry, edge width of one, and an edge roundness of 3.07. Get these, some of these larger gaps and rounded islands. And then we're going to blend these together with a blend node here. And then we're going to put down a cloud two with a scale of 3 and a disorder of 0 0.4 and then we're going to blur this a little bit Let's do a quality 1 1.51 1 for our intensity and let's do a histogram scan grab one from over here the position was 0 0.44 and a contrast 2.44 and a contrast of 0 0.84 and plug that into our opacity and then just to cap everything off let's do a histogram scan 0 0.44 for a position and 0 0.84 for a contrast And now we have a nice variation of size, scale, shape, and roundness. I'm going to drop in transformation 2D node just so I can select position of certain elements a little bit better. There's something that I would like. Thinking around about there. We could get. That looks like a good layout there. And then we can move on and put in a multi-directional warp grayscale. Put that into our input. And then let's do another cloud two. This time with a scale of four. And a disorder of 0 0.65. And then let's put this into a blur again. Quality one with an intensity of 1.57 and then plug that into our intensity input for our multi-directional warp and with our multi-directional warp let's change some settings here so let's go for a low intensity of 2.12 keep the angle at zero let's put this to chain so we get a little bit of movement there with our islands and then we can do another one and we'll do it without the blur this time and let's put our intensity to 2.59 angle can stay at zero and then this can also stay at chain and again just a little bit extra movement there with a slightly sharper image let's put in a parallel noise and let's put the scale down to 19 we'll leave the disorder at zero and let's put in a slope blur grayscale use this as our slope and then put our, our map here 
from remote direction warp into the grayscale value here. Slope blur. And let's make this fill 32 with an intensity of 0 0.2. And we'll keep this mode to blur. And let's go again with another slope blur so we can just flip this and duplicate it. And let's put this to 0 0.3 and change this to min. And then for our input, we're not going to use this parallel noise. We will use our height map. Here a little bit. And we're going to take our height map out of this base material node. And we'll plug that into our slope. And I'm just going to blur it a little bit. Quality to 1. Intensity to 0 0.1. Just to give it a little bit of blur so it's not quite as sharp. And there we go. So we have this uh, movement that's based on our height map. And now let's do a histogram scan. Put the contrast to 0 0.06 and our position to 0 0.38 and we're just bringing out some of those edges back. So let's now drop in a non-uniform blur grayscale and we're going to blur it on itself. The low intensity, so something 0 0.35 Something around there. Uh, we can keep everything else the way it is. And let's duplicate this with an intensity of 0 0.1. And we're just going to blend these together to get a bit of variation between the two. We'll so have the same value across the entire crack map. And to use as our mask, I'm going to just use the height map again. So I'm going to duplicate this over. I'm going to change our this blur to 10. It's quite a we get a larger scale macro shape there. And I'm going to do a safe transform. And I'm going to title it twice. Now let's do a histogram scan to capture a mask. 0 0.51 for our position. And a contrast of 0. 9, 8. And let's plug that into our mask. I'm going to do another slope blur, grayscale. And I'm going to use this parallel noise back here. Samples at 32 and intensity at 0 0.1. And we're going to leave that at blur. Just to give some overall larger movement there based on our parallel noise. And then another histogram scan. And 0 0.52, just to recapture some of those darker values and sort of some of these blend some of these together, some of these islands together. So I can see, you can see that there's still some uh, lines here and I want to just capture some of these larger islands and kind of merge a couple, in, couple of them into each other. So I'm just going to bring up the weight value in them and then it's going to capture these larger areas. I'm going to drop in another multi-directional warp. And I'm going to use our height map just as it is. I'm going to put our intensity down to 2.59. Let's put an angle of minus 120 and we'll put our mode to chain. And it's just going to use our height map to, to make sure it's contextual to our height map a little bit. And another slope blur with another blurred version of our height map. This time I'm going to put this at 0 0.2. And use that as our slope. Let's bring our samples all the way up and put this down to 0 0.4 with a mode of min. 
really just starting to eat away at those islands and give a lot of these sort of tarmac shapes from our height map into the islands. Let's put a levels node in. I'm just going to bring the grey values down just to merge some of those islands in again. Something like that. Okay, so I'm now going to do a histogram scan from this one here. And I'm going to do a position of 0 0.01 and a contrast of 1. And now we're going to put this into a flood fill. Get some larger, some areas with information. So I'm still not getting some of these islands. So let's go back a little bit. And I believe I forgot to put in another histogram scan here. So let's drop a histogram scan in uh, right away here. Just after a multi-directional warp and below a parallel noise here. Let's put this to 0 0.2 to in a contrast of 1 and plug that into our slope blur. Let's see how that looks. There we go. So we're now getting islands with just this one area where it's combined multiple islands in together, but that's fine. Now let's add a flood fill grayscale. Luminance random to 0 0.82 and a luminance adjustment of 0 0.37. Let's do distance into source only source and let's bring the maximum distance up to be sure let's bring in a levels same that we did before bring the weight values all the way up and then plug that into our mask now I'm going to put in a little bit of a blur quality 1 really low value 0 0.1 and then I'm going to multiply this on top of our edge mask here, of our cracks. And then I'm going to multiply that down again with value somewhere around 0 0.5. And we will expose this value later on. Let's just clean up a little bit to the here, bring everything up. Now we're going to just do some angles. So let's do a blood fill gradient. Angle 87. So everything kind of points more or less up and down. And then we're going to add in a bunch of variation anyway, so 0 0.76. And let's just grab these, this distance and levels node. And plug that in the same way we did before. And let's uh, just copy this blur node again. And I'm going to blend our edge mask over here back on top of this to give us our uh, edges again so multiply that and now I'm going to multiply this down on top of uh, this uh, mask here instead of multiplying and go actually just min darken and we'll expose this value as well. But so let's just bring this down a little bit. So run a bit there, and we'll expose those at these two values at the end of the graph. Now let's add in some tarmac uh, in between the cracks. So I'm going to put down a blend node and put this into the background, and then set this to max lighten. And then we're going to grab our height map and put a histogram range node in. Bring this over here and do a safe transform grayscale 
I'm going to tail it twice. Offset of 0 0.32 and both axes. And then plug this in. And there you'll see we've got our height tarmac uh, poking through the middle. They're poking through in the uh, gaps. And let's do a directional warp as a whole. And we'll base this off our height map as well. Let's do an intensity of 3.18 and an angle of, let's do minus 90 degrees so it goes downwards. I'm going to add in some higher areas here to give some height difference across the entire cracks. Let's do a blend node and let's put down a levels node and then plug that in. I'm going to, in our levels node, I'm going to go over here to this little diagram here which says values so we're just going to click that and then we can come into the numbers area and I'm just going to bring up the level out low to a value of 0 0.45 and that's essentially bringing up the black value here and I'm going to plug this get a mask here so we can let's just use this mask here and we can now see that we have some higher areas in our cracks. So now just to finish off uh, our height here, we can, we can just add in auto levels. Make sure we have the full range and then do an output. And we can just output this to a cracks output. Save that over there. Let's plug in a normal node and plug our auto levels into our normal load node and let's put this up to five and this is going to be another value that we can change up and then let's do a normal combine we'll combine that with our normal map back here out of our base material And let's change this to detail oriented and let's put down a curvature smooth and take this and put it into our curvature smooth and let's put a gradient map down and a blend let's do a soft light and let's bring our color map base color from our base material node bring this over and we soft light that down keep that one just now let's add our cracks information to our roughness so very quickly we can just invert our auto levels and then add it onto our roughness so that we get some variation on each island and we get the crack information to be quite rough And we can bring that down to any value that you like. Down to it there. Now let's do an AO map. Plug our auto levels in. And let's do world units. So let's do 400. And we can do a height scale of 5. And then we're going to just blend that with our previous AO. And let's just multiply that down. And finally, let's do our height. So let's just grab our cracks. Set this to multiply. And let's grab our height map. So let's, now that we've blended, we have these blend nodes all sitting here. What we can do is we can actually just make a make up a mask to control how much, how, how many cracks and how intense the cracks are via the tool. 
So I'm going to take the mask from our height map directly. So I'm going to take it from this safe transform node that we tiled twice, put in a histogram scan and put our contrast to 0 0.96 and our position value will control how, many, how much of the cracks we see. So let's put this at a default value of 0 0.5 for just now and then plug the, the these into all of our blend nodes. And let's make up a blend node for our normal map. Let's do a normal blend to the top here and then we'll grab our normal map from our base material and plug that into the bottom area here, the background, and use our mask to control that. And now let's change these into inputs instead of using them straight out of our base, uh, base material node. So we'll need our color, our normal map, our roughness, L and height. Let's, let's name these. And also to help us in identifying them and helping us use some uh, quick settings inside Substance, we can uh, add a usage here. So if we just add item and then change the usage to base color, and we'll do the same with normal map. For normal, roughness, and then let's swap these inputs out for our new inputs here. Let's drag these up a little bit over here. And then let's select all of these nodes here. And then right click, create graph from selection. Give it a name, time mark cracks, hit OK. And then we can delete them. And now let's drag our tarmac cracks in. Let's right click and open reference in context. Again, if this is not set, then go into your preferences and set it. Uh, we're going to just set some more outputs here. So we already have an output for our cracks here. Let's put an output for color. So we can actually just right click and create output nodes. It's a bit quicker. Let's expose some parameters here for this node. And we're going to start off by just setting a parameter for a mask to control how many of the cracks we see. We just go to new, cracks amount, hit OK, OK. If we double click on our graph, come over to the right hand side, you'll see cracks amount. And then we can just copy and paste that into the label. And that's our parameter exposed. So we're going to do that for a couple more. So let's do that for our AO. Let's do that for our AO strength. Cracks amount so we can hit new. And AO strength. Okay. Okay. Double click on our graph and we can go over here and ambient occlusion strength and put that into our label as well. We can take out the underscores if you like. Do the same for our normal map so we can expose this one as well. Expose new. Let's do normal strength.
Hit OK. Again, double click on the graph, come back over here and just copy that into the label. Two more we're going to do is how much of this map that we are multiplying down. I just realized I actually should have switched that around. So just select the two, these two nodes here and hit X to switch. And let's set this to multiply. Multiplies down our edge mass back down. let's expose this one here so we can do expose new cracks eight undulation Hit okay Hit okay and let's just do this one while we're here so we can do expose new cracks angle strength double click our graph just to go and paste those into the label And that should be all we need all we need to do now for this. So let's go back to our warm tarmac texture. And we have inputs and outputs. And we have controls. So let's now plug these outputs from our base material into our inputs for our tarmac cracks. So let's do our base color, normal, roughness, AO and height. Double click that. We can go through our area here and we can have a look at what's going on. Oh, and now we can right click and drag that into our 3D view there. And let's set our cracks amount to 0 0.5. Ambient occlusion strength to Five. Our normal strength to five as well. Our crack height undulation to zero point four five, and our chunk angle variation here angle strength to zero point two three, and we can now see that we have some crack information in our tar mark here. Now you remember right back at the start of this tutorial we made these tile samplers and we didn't add any angle variation we kept them all in a sort of grid like fashion so that we got a very grid like edge detect and that is because when you're making cracks for tarmac Generally speaking, they do not, they actually have a directionality to them and they don't just crack in all directions. They crack in a very specific way and they always crack in sort of grid like square fashion with the direction of the tires. So you can see this one, the car, the cars would be driving from bottom to top here. And generally speaking, this is how tarmac cracks. You don't just get your general cracks in all directions. So that is our tarmac crack tool complete and you can now reuse this tool for any other projects you like. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. You can watch the next part by clicking the screen or the link in the description. If you would like to get your hands on these source files for this tutorial, then they can be found at the link in the description below as well.